In the last part, we set up a camera to see the player move around. Now it's time to actually get the rotating pickups. So the rundown is pretty simple. If the player touches the pickup, then we make it disappear. Right now when we play, the pickup acts like a rotating piece of wall and it doesn't feel like a collectible. In order to configure the collision between the players and the pickup, we need to check their comp collision components in their blueprints. Before I move on, I want to quickly note that I was trying to experiment around with the component prior to this. I tried to revert back to the way it was before as best as I can, so if some of the options look different, don't worry. In the end, we should have the same settings in the collision component. Starting off with the pickup, select the cube component first and head over to the details panel. Underneath the physics section, there is a section called collision which is what we're going to be working with. Oh, and I also turned off gravity for the pickup because they don't use physics at all, so there wasn't really a point to have it enabled. Okay, this pickup is a collectible, and we want the player to overlap it, just like in most games, to pick it up like a power-up or coins or health. There is an option here called Generate Overlap Events. We will need that for the pickup and the player. Make sure it's checked so that they can overlap each other. There is also an option called can character step up on. It has a pretty long straight to the point kind of name. Essentially, should the character step up on top of it, if it bumps into it, like maybe bump the toe on the staircase or a step, not a big deal in our case, so we don't have to worry about that, nor the physics material override up here. That is where you set how bouncy or how high the friction is like. For example, you can treat this as a rubber band ball or if it's slippery as if it's on ice or not. Continuing on into collision presets, there's a little arrow here that you can click to drop down. And this is the main part of it. By default, I think block all dynamic has been selected. There are a lot of options you can choose from and it can alter how the objects respond to other objects here in this gray area. Let's change it to customs so we can have control over how it should respond. First, the collision enable part. It has a few options. No collision, well, there's that. So I guess that basically means it turns off collision for the pickup. Definitely don't want that. Query only, that is useful for raycasts and overlaps like triggers, which is promising because we want the pickup to trigger or activate something when it gets collided. So let's use that one. As for the other, as for the other two, physics only is like the opposite of query. It's not a trigger like a laser or a hologram. With that, we would end up treating the object like a physical object, like a wall, or make jiggly things move around, or perhaps like making a ragdoll effect. And collision enabled is just using both query and physics options combined. So maybe it's a good idea if we are not sure what to set it to, use collision enabled. For, for the collision responses down here, it tells the pickup how to respond to these certain type of objects. There are three important terms that you need to know for this. There's ignore, overlap, and block. Ignore sounds really easy. It doesn't notice that the object is touching or going through the object. Overlap, this tells the object that something is inside or touching it. Lastly, block, this stops the object from going through it, but it knows that something collided into it just like a wall. For pickup, we want the ball to overlap it, but which one of these options do we toggle with? We have to look at the object type for that in the, bl in the player blueprint. So we need to go to the player blueprint, configure its collision component. So we're going to do that a little quickly here. We don't have to do that much. I'm going to set customs to collision presets, and I'm just going to leave it as collision enable here. And the object type, this is the part that we need to keep an eye on. So I'm going to change this from world dynamic to physics body because I think that makes more sense to me. Of course, you can choose whichever one you want. You can choose pawn, but for me, I'm going to stick to physics body in this case. And I'm just going to compile and save. And back into the pickups blueprint, the player object type now is physics body. So I'm going to go down here where it says physics body and move over to the middle where it lines up with overlap. 
Now the pickup will overlap with the player. And one more quick thing is adding in the functionality to disappear when it touches in the event graph. I already went ahead and added in the functionality. It's a very short series of notes. What it's saying here is that once an actor is overlapping, check to see if it's the player. If it is, then destroy the pickup. Very simple. Now let's check to see if it works. Compile and save. And now we are able to get the pickups. And that's also the game. Well, we're almost done, but that's it for this part. However, if you're coming from Unity, please stick around just a little bit. I'm going to compare the collision setup between the two engines. In Unity, there is a component very similar to Unreal's collision section called Collider. Well, it's there's different kinds of collider components depending on which shape you would like to attach. There could be a sphere collider, a polygon collider. In this case, since the pickups are cubes, I gave them a box collider. And it doesn't seem that intimidating and it's very easy to toggle if the game object should be a trigger or not thanks to this little option here called is trigger. Then we would have to attach a script to a game object with special functions such as on collision enter, on collision stay, exit, or its trigger version on trigger enter, on trigger stay, or exit. In this case, similar to what we did to get the pickups, because in Unreal we put the code in the pickup, but here I have in this Unity project, I put the code in the player's perspective. So in this case, if the player enters a trigger, check to see if that other game object is a pickup. If so, then turn off that pickup. What we have to do with the object types is similar to Unity's layer system and its layer collision matrix. It determines collisions between groups of objects that are that are in those layers. In this case, both the player and the pickups are in the same layer, so they are able to notice each other. Hopefully this part left an impact and helps you understand more about collision. We are almost done making the game, just need to work on the UI and the materials, and that will be it. If you want more info about collisions, the links to the documentations are down below, or comment what you think about them, and I will see you in the next level. Bye!